Welcome to ECE 302. This is lecture 1.4 on linear algebra. I am Professor Stanley Chan. This lecture is optional. However, if you want to learn machine learning in the future, then I would highly recommend you watch this video because linear algebra, they are really the fundamental tools in dealing with large scale data sets. There are three parts of today's lecture. We will talk about inner products, we will talk about matrix calculus, and then we will talk about matrix inversion. To start with, I'm going to define some notations for matrices and vectors. A vector is defined as a lowercase bold face letter. It will be a n element vector in Rn. A matrix is denoted by an uppercase bold face letter. Uh, usually it will be an n by n matrix. Entries of the matrix are denoted by either aij or a bracketed A with subscripts I and J. The columns of an A matrix will be denoted as uh, both face A1, A2 to AN. The transpose, which is a 90 degree rotation of the matrix, uh, will have this form. Uh, an identity matrix will be denoted as a, a, a capital letter I, uh, a all one vector would be denoted as a capital letter one. So you have one, uh, that would be uh, all the ones in this vector. All zero vector uh, would be uh, all zeros as it is named. A standard basis EI will have uh, zeros everywhere except the ith element and then uh, the rest will also be zero. So for example, if you have uh, a 2D plane, then this vector uh, will be uh, one zero. This is your first standard basis. This vector will be zero one. That will be your second standard basis. An inner product between two vectors are defined as x transpose y. Okay, so sometimes you will see that people write in the product as uh, x and y with this angled bracket. Uh, that, that's also okay to just write x transpose y. They mean the same thing. And the inner product is defined as the summation of a n, uh, y n, where n will go from uh, 1 to capital N, where n, where capital N is the number of elements in this vector. So for example here, if you have a vector x which contains two elements, then the inner product of x and x will just become uh, x1, x2, this is your transpose, and then you have x1, uh, x2, and so the inner product can be calculated by multiplying this x with this, and then this number with that, and so you will have x1 squared plus x2 squared. An inner product has a very beautiful geometry. The geometry of the inner product is that you can view one vector as here, this is your x, and then the other vector would be your y. If you take the inner product, then you are essentially projecting this y vector onto the space spanned by the x, and then anything that you have projected, this length will become your inner product. This projection perspective is extremely powerful. Uh, you need to use it very often when you start to represent signals, when you try to find bases, when you try to compress data. Uh, these will become very useful. As an example uh, of inner product, I want to introduce this idea called the weighted inner product. So here I am introducing a matrix in this case, this matrix is a diagonal matrix that contains A and B along the diagonal. I want to calculate this inner product. It's called the weighted inner product. And you can see that 
to do this calculation is actually not hard. You just need to write out all the terms carefully and then you can uh, find the solution. So here you have this x minus mu and since they are all vectors, you have x1 minus mu1 and then x2 minus mu2. Uh, and then this matrix is A0, 0, 0, B. And then the third is uh, x1 minus mu1, x2 minus mu2. If you carry out this calculation, uh, you can see that uh, this a is only applied to this a uh, x1 and mu1 term and this x1 and mu1 term. There is really no cross term because you have this zero here. And therefore you will have a uh, times uh, x1 minus mu1 uh, uh, square plus uh, b uh, times x2 minus mu2 uh, uh, square. And therefore you can see that the a will go to the x1 square and then the b will go to the x2 square. So this is a fairly easy calculation. Now if you have a c here, okay, let's say you have a c here, uh, then what will happen is that the calculation will become uh, a times x1 minus mu1 square uh, plus uh, C times x1 minus mu1 times x2 minus mu2. However, since you have 2C here, then you have a 2C there, and then you have B times x2 minus mu2 squared. Okay, so if you have a C, then this calculation says that you will have a cross term x1 and x2. Once you have defined the inner product, you can also define something called the norm. Uh, a norm is essentially the length of a vector. So let's say here is your 2D plane, and then this is your vector, and then uh, you can define the norm as uh, uh, all the elements, xi, and you sum them up, uh, and then you take the square, and afterwards you take the square root. Uh, for example, if your x vector contains two elements, x1 and x2, uh, then, the, the, then the norm of this vector x is just x1 square plus x2 square, take the square root. Okay, And this is essentially just this length of this vector. So uh, here is, is your x vector, and then this number here is the norm of, of your x. Now, uh, there are different types of norms. This is called this uh, L2 norm, and therefore we just put a 2 here. There are other types of norms which are not very really required for this course. Uh, and so uh, you can define a set omega that contains all the x such that this norm is less than r. Then what is it? Well, you can express out uh, this norm, and you can see that this set omega is essentially just this set. Why? Because omega equals to the set that contains all the x such that the norm of x is less than or equals to r, right? And here, since this two norm of x is just the square root of x1 square plus x2 square, and so you have uh, the set being any x1 and x2 satisfying this inequality, then you can multiply uh, this. Uh, you, you can do the square on both sides. And so you have this expression. So what is it? Well, you look at the diagram here, that will just become a circle. Here is x1, here is x2, and then uh, you are asking for all the possible x that are inside this uh, circle with a radius of r. So then you can define uh, this omega. That is also very useful uh, inequality uh, it's called the triangle inequality. It says that for any vector x and y, if you sum them and then you take the uh, inner, if you take the norm outside, it's going to be less than or equals to the sum of the individual norms. All right, now let's move on to talk about matrix calculus. Uh, by matrix calculus, I mean that taking a derivative of a scalar field with respect to a vector of variables. Um, typically, all these calcul matrix calculus results can be found in standard textbooks on matrix uh, analysis. 
Uh, for example, there is a matrix cookbook you can find on the internet which contains all the useful identities. Here I'm only highlighting uh, a few very useful identities uh, uh, for elementary uh, machine learning. Uh, this is a scalar field fx which is defined as the inner product of a and x and then uh, in this case you can show that the gradient of this uh, vector which is defined as a vector that contains all the individual components gradients uh, here okay and so now if you have this uh, a transpose x if you take the gradient that you can follow this calculation it will give you a vector of a how about another example if you have this scalar field which is uh, defined as this quadratic term x transpose ax if you want to take the gradient with respect to the x then you just follow the definition in the beginning where you take the entire vector of the scalar field taking derivatives with respect to all these a1 through a x1 through x n just write down the definition of all these quantities uh, then you can show that it will become uh, this quantity okay it will become a times x plus a transpose x now if a is a symmetric matrix so that a equals to a transpose then the gradient of this scalar field f will give you 2 times ax. Now at this point we wonder why do I need to learn uh, these? I can give you an example where uh, suppose you have uh, a, a set of data points which are living here. Okay, and then I want to find a straight line that can um, that it will be the best fit is called a linear regression problem and here that will be your uh, x values and then these would be your y values okay so here it will be uh, this number would be x uh, i and then this number would be uh, y i then uh, you want to find a straight line and so you are saying that okay y i has to equal to a times x i uh, plus b I want this line to hold, right? Because A would be would define the slope of this line, and B would define the y-intercept of this line. Okay, so AX plus B is really the, the line representation of uh, the equation of this line. And uh, now you want this line to be close to all these data points as as close as possible. And therefore, what do you want to do? Well, you want to find um, a and B uh, such that uh, this yi minus axi uh, plus B um, and then this has to be a distance right so you want to uh, uh, this distance how do I measure well this distance and let's just take a square as a that's a distance and then you take the summation of I going from 1 to n for all the data points uh, you want this to be minimized and by minimize I mean that you want it to be as small as possible okay so how to visualize this this is your actual measurement and here is your prediction okay so a x i plus b would be a point here this is your a x i plus b that's your prediction and then this point is your y i this is your y i uh, that's your actual measurement you want this y i uh, and then you measure the deviation with respect to a x i plus b this has to be as small as possible and you are not just worrying about one term you're also worrying about all these other terms all right so you want to minimize this quantity here and so how are you going to do that well this summation is exactly just the vector of y minus uh, this x okay and then you have uh, ax uh, plus b okay it will be a vector like this and then if you want to minimize minimize this function then you you notice that you need to take the derivative and setting it to zero and how are you going to take the derivative of a norm uh, square function uh, that 
will require you to know a matrix calculus, the identities like these. Okay, so we will come back to the discussion of this extremely powerful problem later on when we go to linear regression. Uh, however, at, at this point, I just want you to realize that this matrix calculus is actually extremely useful uh, for the uh, for data analysis and machine learning. Okay, so here is another example it is exactly what we are trying to do. It is the norm of uh, AX minus Y. And without going into the details of this uh, calculation, uh, we find that the gradient of this term is 2 times A transpose AX minus Y. Okay, so um, now let us move on to talk about matrix inversions because these will also be extremely useful. Uh, let me just remind everyone what are uh, determinants of uh, a matrix. Suppose I have a, a 2 by 2 matrix, then the determinant of this matrix is just, is just A times D minus B times C. Okay, and uh, what is the inverse? The inverse of this uh, matrix is uh, 2 by 2 matrix is uh, another 2 by 2 matrix where you flip over this D and then you have this A and here you have minus B and minus C divide by the determinant of the matrix so you have AD minus BC. <clears throat> All right so this is a very quick summary of the matrix calculus, matrix inversion, and also uh, Nina products. I hope that you have learned something here. A lot of these will be used uh, later, uh, and so it is good to know about these. But as I said, this, since this is an optional uh, lecture, uh, it's good to learn these, but it's not a required part of this course. If you have any question, uh, feel free to post on Piazza forum or send us an email. Thank you.